Hey, Wrangler 4xE fans. If you see the graphic on your screen right now, this is a graphic that I've kind of come up with on my own to try to put an image to what I think the different modes in the Wrangler 4xE do. Uh, one thing to understand about the Wrangler 4xE is that it is always a hybrid. And th that statement will make sense here in a minute. As you look at the power flow screen on the Wrangler 4xE, right now you can see I'm in electric mode. It is only using the electric motor. I'm accelerating. You can see the number goes up. I let off the pedal and I'm in max regen mode. You can see I go to a negative number indicating that it is recharging the battery just a little bit. Now, one thing about max regen mode, it's not uh, like a magic thing. It's not going to directly put enough energy back in that you can run off it's you know there's no such thing as perpetual motion so you know you can see about the max it gets right there is about 27 20 whatever and i can just accelerate a little bit and get way over that so that's it's not a magic thing that's going to just kind of create a perpetual motion kind of thing but it does give you energy back when you're decelerating but that's a sidebar so i'm going to put the vehicle in hybrid mode and when this light turns green, I'm going to accelerate away from the stop and you will see the engine, the yellow number there, the engine will begin to give us power and the battery will also give us power. So I'm gonna kind of accelerate easy. You can see it stays in electric mode, but as soon as I make a little more of a demand from the vehicle, it goes ahead and kicks on the engine and we're getting power from both, as you can see there. And um, you can see that it's kind of load sharing the power between the electric motor and the gas engine. Now, that we understand that that is hybrid mode. We understand how that works. Now, I'm gonna put the vehicle in e-save mode, and I'm gonna go in here, and I'm in battery charge mode. I'm gonna switch that to battery save and go back into that screen so you can see what we're dealing with here. You can see in e-save right now, I'm using the gas engine to provide a little bit of a charge for the battery. Now that I'm gonna accelerate away, look what's happening. I'm getting positive numbers from both the gas engine and the battery. Now, why is that if I'm in e-save mode? Or wouldn't you think that we would only have a negative number there? We would never have a positive number. But if we go back to our graphic and see the vehicle is always a hybrid. There's been some miscommunication about what e-save mode, some people have referred to it as a gas only mode, and that is not the case because the vehicle is never a gas only vehicle, at least not the way it's designed to be. I would imagine in some extreme circumstances, maybe, I don't know, but it is always a hybrid. So let's go back in here to the e-save screen and let's put it in battery charge. This is the least most, this is the least efficient way to operate this vehicle. When you're in ESA plus charge, look at that. You're still getting positive numbers from both the gas and electric engine. Now, once we've taken off and the vehicle says, okay, I don't need you to really take off anymore. Now I'm gonna charge that battery just a little bit. But if I demand, let me back away from this vehicle that's in front of me just a little bit and I demand more, you can see both the gas engine and the electric motor provide power for acceleration. And then it goes back to the point, once we get on a level spot here, you will see it'll start running up a charge again on that battery and taking power away to, uh, to give back to the battery. So I just wanted to explain that a little bit with this graphic so you can understand. I mean, I, I don't know if I've got this right. I don't know if I've got the, the, the length of those bars right. I don't know if I've properly graphically represented the idea that the vehicle is always a hybrid, but I wanted to try to explain that in video form so you kind of understand what's going on. All you're really doing when you're changing modes, you're changing the bias the hybrid bias, so to speak. In, in, you know, in electric mode, it has the highest electric bias, and but it is still hybrid. You know, even in electric mode, we can watch this engine, we'll shut off here in a second, but if we pound on that gas pedal, we will still get a, you know, electric, a gas motor assist. And if we put it in hybrid mode, that engine, you know, we're still gonna shut off, but the engine's gonna be more likely to kick on than it is in electric only mode. And in e-save mode, of course, the electric motor just, I mean, the gas engine just runs all the time 
in parallel with the electric motor. The Wrangler 4xe, if you're not, if you don't understand hybrid technology, the Wrangler 4xe is a parallel hybrid, meaning that both the gas engine and the electric motor have access to the drivetrain. In a series hybrid, kind of like the uh, the first generation Chevy Volts, the electric motor, and then the BMW i3 is another good example of a series hybrid. And I believe the i8, the BMW i8 is also, I don't think that engine is connected to the drivetrain. But in those vehicles, the gas engine isn't connected to the drivetrain in any way, shape, or form. It is just there to charge the batteries. That's a series hybrid, and the Wrangler 4 by E, since we have the electric motor in the transmission and a clutch that then connects it to the gas engine, that creates a parallel hybrid environment. So hopefully that answers any questions you might have, and uh, if that helped you, let me know in the comments down below, or if you have anything to add to that, if I worded anything right, wrong, because I'm driving and I'm trying to pay more attention to the road than I am to uh, what's on my camera. Um, please feel free to include that in the comments down below. Thanks for watching.